One of the deadliest Arab-Israel wars happened in 1973. It was called the Yom Kippur War. It happened on one of the holiest days in the Jewish calendar. Egyptian and Syrian troops made a surprise attack on Jerusalem in early October of 1973. Israel took days to recover. The war went on for about three weeks. And finally, in the end of October that year, the United States and the then USSR brokered a ceasefire. Not least because there was the threat of both the superpowers getting involved in this conflict. And if they did, it would have naturally propelled into a nuclear war. At that time, interestingly, the then USSR was backing the Arab bloc, while the United States was naturally supporting Israel. Today, almost 50 years on, there's been a role reversal. After Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett's secret visit to Moscow, Israel says it is happy to play mediator between Russia and Ukraine to end this war. Now the question is, how easy or difficult will that be? Will Israel be able to balance both its historic ties with Washington on the one hand and its delicate security interests with Moscow and play the role of an honest broker? On Crux Decode this week, we analyze what's in it for Israel and more importantly, its Prime Minister, Mr. Bennett, who's trying to play peacemaker. Naftali Bennett came to power last year as the head of a coalition of eight political parties. Now, these parties form an unusual government. They've got representatives from the far right to the far left, and even a party that represents Israel's Arab citizens. They had only one objective, and that objective was to oust Israel's longtime ruler, Benjamin Netanyahu. And in that objective, this coalition of disparate political parties with their deep differences in achieving that one particular objective, kicking Netanyahu out of power, yes, this coalition was successful. Bennett is an Orthodox Jew. He made millions in the country's high-tech sector. He has served in various cabinet positions in the past, but he lacks the charisma and the international experience of his predecessor, Netanyahu. Mediating between Ukraine and Russia would be the hardest thing ever that Bennett has done in his life. Bennett, who's been in power for less than a year, is largely untested on the world stage. Now, wittingly or unwittingly, he has positioned Israel in an uncomfortable middle ground between Russia and Ukraine. By wading into mediation in the middle of this war, that could be a total minefield for Israel. After all, Israel has never been in the position of a broker. It has always, almost inevitably, found itself on either side of a warring conflict. Now, there are two good reasons for why this middle ground is very tricky for Israel. Now, here is Israel's big predicament, why it cannot afford to piss off Putin. Israel coordinates very closely with Moscow in the war that's been going on in Syria. And remember, this war has been going on for well over 10 years now. There is very close coordination of aerial strike points, humanitarian inflows, and even counter-terror intelligence sharing that's been going on between Russia and Israel. Israel can ill afford to have a spillover of this particular conflict in Syria onto its borders, threatening its interests. Even Washington, which is Israel's biggest benefactor, has been looking the other way to this open cooperation between Tel Aviv and Moscow. Also, more importantly, Israel needs Moscow's support in the negotiations that countries are having with Iran over its nuclear program. Now, Israel thinks, rightfully or otherwise, but it thinks that the world is letting Iran get away lightly and that there aren't enough restrictions being placed in Iran's way to prevent it from getting a nuclear weapon. Now, those negotiations which have been happening in, uh, in Vienna, at least for the moment, have hit a dead end and Moscow has played a part in those negotiations hitting a dead end. Now, criticism of Naftali Bennett's government has been mounting ever since Vladimir Putin launched this invasion of Ukraine. Israel was, in fact, the only one of the Western countries 
not to sanction Russia, despite the fact that Israel's biggest benefactor, the United States, was leading the charge of sanctions against Moscow. Bennett has also been very reluctant to publicly censure Vladimir Putin for his invasion. While Bennett repeatedly expressed his support for the Ukrainian people, he also stopped short of condemning Russia's invasion. Now, with his visit to Moscow, Bennett became only the only Western leader to meet the Russian president since this war began. But here's the thing, Israel also has very good relations with Ukraine. Ukraine is home to about 200,000 Jews, many of whom have fled, and a good number of them are expected to land up in Israel. So Israel's got to have a refugee problem on its hands very soon. Also, the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, himself happens to be a Jew. That is a fact that is not lost on Israel. But more than anything, there is a domestic element, a domestic angle to why Bennett is taking this gamble. Naftali Bennett and Yair Lapid, the foreign minister who is the man slated to become the next prime minister in 2023 as part of this coalition arrangement, they are the heads of this uneasy coalition government. One represents the far right, that's Bennett, and the other a centre-left party, that's Yair Lapid. Each man will have a veto on all major decisions that this government makes. The coalition has as many as eight political parties they span the full ideological spectrum from hard right to hard left. And like I said before, it also has for the very first time an Arab party, a Muslim party. The Bennett Lapid agenda on the Palestinian issue, which is the most critical security issue, most critical political issue for Israel for the last 50 years. The agenda on that issue is very clear. This government does not have the elbow room to move forward on the Israel-Palestine question. The new coalition is built to tackle completely different issues, outlining a far-reaching domestic agenda. And there are two goals in that domestic agenda which they wanted to fulfill. One was replacing Netanyahu, which has been achieved. And two is ending the governance crisis in Israel. Now that second objective is still very much a work in progress. Naftali Bennett heads a very small political party. He earned the top post first simply because he was the hardest one to wean away from the Netanyahu camp. He's a successful tech entrepreneur. He's got an energetic, straight-shooting, can-do demeanor about him. He's also very pragmatic on many issues. He thinks of himself as someone who's driven by common sense, someone who is ready to listen, very unlike his predecessor, Netanyahu. But in forming this coalition, Bennett has lost his political base, which is the right way. So what that means is it leaves him with very few political options. He must at least appear to try to fill the large shoes left behind by his predecessor. Hence this gamble that he's taken to try and play mediator. But it is also precisely because of these coalition compulsions that Bennett realizes he cannot make any major moves on the Israel-Palestine question. His own coalition partners will be the first ones to shoot it down. Hence, realizing his political compulsions very well, he's now throwing the dice on an issue which does not affect the average Israeli. But if Bennett manages to pull it off, then it will transform his own image and more importantly, the image of his government. On the one hand, Bennett has upgraded his international standing overnight it's also won him a lot of political points within Israel. But on the other, he's taking a huge risk, not just for himself as a politician, but for the state of Israel and its standing in the world. The Israeli prime minister, whether he knows it or not, has simply walked in to deep Ukrainian waters without realizing how deep it is. And now that he's waded in, he has no option but to swim to the other side.